Hi, Steve. Uh, thanks for joining me virtually once again for this little recording. Um, this is uh, very uh, generous of you to, to share some more time with me and, and with you, the coaches. I've got so much great feedback from from everyone, really, that, I, that I've spoken to since our event in London. Um, it, it's great to hear people really enjoying it. Um, as well as is really people taking action, and I think that was uh, what we'd really wanted is is transformation rather than information. And I, and I'm really loving hearing how people are kind of showing up differently and taking different action. And um, this is just a, a little video that that you agreed to do with us, which I really love, which is kind of just a debrief and and just a reflection of you and I, uh, or sorry, should I say our reflections from from the two days together. Absolutely, and uh, very generous of you as well to set aside additional time because um, it's a great illustration of serving people beyond what was agreed to and beyond what was expected. And um, the commitment is to the transformation more than just getting good feedback or just getting good reviews. It's really to helping people see their coaching practices differently. And that's what transformation means. It means change it. I change the way I see my possibilities. And then seeing things differently, I live differently. Yeah, so um, before we carry on moving, I just realized something that um, because we're recording this together, we'll, we'll be kind of split screen. Um, and so it will chop off the edge of your screen. So I think half of your face might get cut off. So you might want to just yeah, that, well, that would be perfect. I think that, that would be so totally unacceptable. Absolutely. So I'm I'm glad we I'm glad we've uh, sorted that out right at the you know, front. I like to watch these things many times over, and uh, if, if if I can only see half of me, you can imagine the disappointment. I can, I can only imagine. Yeah, that that I'm sure would be would be far better, and um, I'm sure. Dead center. Dead center. Absolutely. So um, th there, there are a number of things that I thought we could we could debrief on, and one of the first things that really came to mind, and it's a question that that I've been asked from one of the coaches, is how do they get the most from the two days that we spent together? Um, and they've said uh, so. Someone said to me today, in fact, that the weekend was great, and they got a lot from it, and they're feeling um, good. They're feeling energized and um, different to how they felt before they came to the event and they were just concerned about this being a seminar effect a seminar high where you feel good because you paid some money you've attended it you're around other people but they were a little worried that when they came back that this kind of good feeling would wear off and they would just be back to where they were and their business would be in the same place um so maybe that's a good place for us to start um, I've got some thoughts on it, and then I'd, I'd love you to, to jump in and, and, and you know add to that. Um, so for me, one of the things that I thought would be really great for people um, to get the most out of seminar from our event, and, and really any seminar, and this is something that I did for years when I used to attend other people's events, was I would really make sure that I went and implemented what I had learned or take some action from what I'd learned from the event, because I found that, you know, I could I could make pages of notes and have some really good information, really good advice, but it was only by doing it myself and going and testing some things out that I'd learned from the event that I would actually be different and whatever I'd learned would really, really sink in. And the cool thing is that we covered so much that different things will resonate with different people. And um, there are some things that people have shared that really stood out for for them that that I even forgot that we talked about, um, but but there will be you know certain things that that resonate and I really encourage people that you don't need to do everything and and meticulously go through your notes but even just doing one or two things that really stood out for you whether that was looking at your circle of influence um, names mm -hmm. and and some people have said to me that they realised there were even more than they wrote down and just going out and connecting with some of those. Um, whether it's going and testing something that they had in their mind when we when you spoke about the testing versus trusting distinction, um, maybe it was something from Jacqueline's um, 
uh, exercise, whatever it is, going out and trying that out, I think is is the biggest thing that would make a difference for people and for the coaches to really take this this transformation forward and make sure this is something that's lasting and not just um, you know a one off. And then and then the second thing that I wanted to just to share was. Um, in addition to going out and testing things, and I don't know what you think about this, you might have a different view, it, It's and maybe this just works for me, but what I found really helped me is um, also then sharing that journey. And I, I don't know why, but I find that if I go and do something, and for me just write about it or share, and when I write about it, I share it online, I find that really kind of gets me clear in my head around what did I actually learn, what did I do? But number two, it also helps other people. And I think as coaches, I, I used to do that before I was a coach, but but as coaches, I think it gets us used to being in a kind of leadership position or sharing with others through our own experience. I just think it's a, a really good thing to do, and I encourage my clients to do that. So do you have any thoughts on those two things or anything you'd want to add? No, I like both of, both of the uh, observations you made. Um, I know that um, for for many many years, I lived in a uh, hoped for outside in world. So I would have a seminar, go to a seminar, and then I would hope that um, this that, that some of the things I saw, the new possibilities, that it wouldn't just fade away, and that honeymoon feeling would fade away. And it would go away. So I'm hoping that something that happened to me won't stop happening to me. And the whole orientation of that is that there's nothing in me. There's nothing in me to trust. There's nothing in me to rely on and respect and value. And and when that changed, I was able to see that, um, of course, I'm not going to treat the seminar like only a feeling that might come and go. I, Of course, I was there for the very reason of looking at new ideas for building prosperity. This was not strictly a three principles seminar by any stretch. It was a seminar about creating a prosperous practice and sharing ideas and insights on, on how that happens for people and what actions do those people take. And so I have everything to say about whether this seminar wears off and my feeling goes away and, oh, look at me, there I am again, going to one more seminar with money flowing out of me and uh, nothing has changed. And, and when I saw that was up to me, that was my choice, the, everything changed because then um, I, I lived in the inquiry of how can I use this? What's there for me? Let me make some notes of what I saw. How, like you say, what are some things I want to test and play with now based on what I saw? And I love what you've added. Um, if I test things and they're working out well, I want to share it on Ankush's coaching from the 3P sites so other coaches can see what I'm doing, it might be helpful to them. And helping others just anchors it even more in us and makes it more a part of us. And, uh, and it also creates that sense of we're all in this together. We're not out isolated and alone. So um, it is a kind of childish victim position I was in for years and years to hope things would be better, to hope Santa Claus was real, and to hope that things wouldn't wear off. And, and when I saw, wait a minute, I'm not some defective, deficient, passive, powerless being. I can dance with the universe. And so I can, I can take what I saw and, and use it in my life. And I don't have to be a victim of passivity and a victim of the um, wearing out factor and treat this like a, a 
date rape drug in which uh, it wears off after 24 hours and uh, it's gone. It, it's more than that. It's really, it's really the transformation that occurred in the room for everyone. And, and what I enjoyed the most about the seminar is how, how people interacted. I could feel the level of attention was very high. The consciousness in the room felt great. The energy was always very good. It didn't, it didn't fall off for me. It was people were amazingly attentive. The questions were good in the room and on the break and after. And so that was highly interactive two days. And those are always the best. So um, I'm not surprised that a lot of people have great feedback, not just it's not just a review of us as if we're performers it's a it's a it is actually a sharing of the experience of what it was like to go in that room and interact and Jacqueline's game with the cards uh, sitting down let's interact let's see what we can find in here let's go on a, a mission of discovery and I loved how the people in that room did that I um, I thought it was brave and open the the way Billy and Hogne and Arthur got up and opened themselves up and uh, didn't care how they were coming across and were really open hearted about what their own concerns were and so it allowed us all to to support them and let them see that. Um, these concerns are largely illusions. The, the fact that things could really go wrong is really kind of an illusion. Think we're doing better than we realize. And uh, so, so that was my experience. The room is an extraordinary group of people in an extraordinary moment in time. I would add one thing as a recommendation. How do I carry this forward? I would very definitely save all the things we've sent you, um, all the audios, um, the books, the eBooks, the, the webinars we made for you and, and save those so you can regularly listen. Even if you just listen to 10 minutes of it, allow it to, uh, wake you back up into where you were when you were in the room and what you saw. And that's always helped me when I attended a seminar that I knew was a defining moment, was a sea change in how I was going to do life. When I stopped um, wondering whether it would whether it would wear out or, or how how long does this drug last uh, and stop thinking of it as a drug and started thinking of it as an opportunity. Then what I would do is, how do I make sure that this doesn't wear off instead of, oh, I'm just worried, I'm just hoping it doesn't wear off. And of course, I would have no idea what to do to have that not happen, given who I am as a, a helpless amoeba, with, with, you know, kind of floating a, a shapeless form floating under a microscope with, with no direction of its own. I can guarantee and ensure that any weekend I go to has a lasting effect on me by what I do to guarantee and ensure it. Yeah, gr great point, Steve. And um, I, I love what you said about the other people in the room um, because that really is a really big part of what I feel people paid for. It, it wasn't just you and I, but it was the community and the people that we gathered together in London. And I, I know Michael's created a, a beautiful video that he's posted in the group and, and at the end very generously offered to connect with other people. And I could see people were connecting over the two days with each other. And we encouraged people to meet up before, during the breaks. I know people went out for dinner together. And I would really encourage people to keep those um, those relationships and foster them because this can be a very lonely profession. And, and you've now all connected with some other coaches who are on the journey alongside you. And like you said, the quality of people in the room was, was great. The participation was great. And, and people I felt were really open to helping each other out. 
And I'm, I'm reminded of something that I heard years ago. It was, it was actually Jamie Smart who shared this with me. And he said that, and I'm probably misquoting it, but it was something along the lines of um, there was a difference or some study that he read about the difference between male um, entrepreneurs and female entrepreneurs. And, and what they found was female entrepreneurs tended to be more uh, successful than male entrepreneurs. And they looked at that and said, why is that? And they found a couple of differences. And what they found in the male entrepreneurs was that the male entre entrepreneurs tended to spend more time on um, things that made them look good, i.e. a flashy business card, a mahogany desk. It was like the trappings of success. Look at me, I'm doing so well. Um, and the female entrepreneurs, they tend to spend more time and attention asking for help. And that that was the kind of the difference that they found. And it was really telling because at the time I was like, oh, I need to have some really flash business cards because then it looks like I'm worth talking to. Um, and I didn't ask for help. And when I heard that, it really, really, it, it just went in. It really resonated with me. And I thought, well, if that's all it takes for me, to increase the likelihood that I'm going to be successful in this profession, then I really opened myself to it. And I really started to just put my, my ego to one side and, and ask whoever I could for help. And I've kind of stuck with that to this day. And so combine, you know, when you're combining those two things together, when you're in a room full of great people, and here is this um, statistic, if you like, or, or bit of information that people that tend to do better are the ones that ask for help. It's kind of a no-brainer that, um, you know, to, to keep this good feeling going, if you like, or get the most out of the money people have spent is is use the other people in the room in, in the nicest possible way to, to help each other out and, and deepen the experience and the learning that you guys have had together. Yeah, I love that. And this whole asking for help, it's a, it's a misunderstanding is the misunderstanding that we are isolated creatures with no interconnectedness. And um, we, we get a lot of that as, as we grow into individuation, leaving the family, having to figure out who we are, what our personality is. We talked about, is there life after high school? And um, it's a misunderstanding that I'm not, that I need to look like I've got my act together that I know what I'm doing and that I don't need help, I'm fine, I'm self-sufficient. And, and that, that appearing that way will somehow win over the people I need to win over in order for them to pay money or send referrals to me. And it's really the opposite. What the real strength comes from adding other people's power to my own and connecting and like you've found, the real that that's really where um, success comes from is from connection and allowing other people's ideas and inspiration to flow through me, throw, flow into me and through me and um, back out to the world. That's why coaching is so popular right now, is because people are finding out that my trying to go it alone and be the exception and be exceptional and um, be a lonely, isolated, high achiever up on a mountain where everybody admires me, that that, that doesn't work for people. It, it leads to great disappointment and frustration and nervous breakdowns and, and allowing support, having a coach, having colleagues in this profession, getting help. It, it just, uh, it increases my power. It doesn't diminish my power. And, uh, and I'm using power, not, not like force or dominance. I'm using, I'm using true power, like the, the power of the sun and the power of the, the rivers and the real power, the universe, the power of nature requires connecting to nature. So, uh, I I like that. I thought we had a very good example of that in the room. We had a microcosm in that room of how powerful it is to collaborate and be collegial and help each other, and work together. And, and so the whole world can be like that with us. We can work with our clients. We can 
We can work with our prospects. Help me work with you to create a professional relationship so that I can coach you and, and have you get what you want from coaching. It's collaborative. I love that definition of power. And uh, as you know, I, I run something called the Powerful Men's Group. So I have um, a, a kind of a relationship, a, a connection with that word. And, and it's very similar to what you've mentioned, which is it's an, it's an innate power. It's something that's already inside of us and that many of us, and I say us because it includes me, kind of hold that down. And it's just about letting what, what's already there come out. And again, that's something that I've heard from a few people where, where I've spoken to them and they've said, well, I got feedback from someone else in the room who said I'm, I'm really powerful or I've got a lot of potential or they were really impressed by me. Or, and, and, and it doesn't surprise me because I see that potential in every single person in that room and there was, there was no one in the room who I thought, well, they shouldn't really be a coach or um, I don't think this profession's really for them or anything like that we, we wouldn't have had you in the room if that's how we felt and so um, you know yes that that's absolutely true and I think coaching for me is is a journey of helping other people see their own power and we do that when we realize our own power too and and that happens again coming back to this step-by-step -step approach which is you know it's not force it's not scaring yourself you know out of your skin but but really it's it's just taking the next step and i think everyone and including myself when we really sit down and if we take a second or two we really know what our next step is and i think we, we we've shared so much with people in the room that they they also know I'm, I'm sure if they slow down at least one or two steps that they can take going forward too well absolutely and uh, some people were taking notes, some weren't, some were just letting, absorbing it all. It's all, perf it's all perfect for whoever was there. And the, um, the seminars that you and I did prior to the event to cover some of the ideas behind what we were going to open up for discussion in the event, those will um, open you back up to what you saw because the idea of, I, I don't know if you, you, you've you heard Mark Howard do his YouTubes, which are available mm -hmm. to anyone, Dr. Mark Howard, on rapport. And, and rapport and making sure if you're going to coach somebody that you and your client really have a, a nice, relaxed connection to each other, um, that, 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 that if that isn't there and, and you're, you're kind of, teachy and preachy and corrective of the person and uh, and they're kind of defensive and um, then you've got then you've got two people um, throwing concepts at each other and the coaching session is is not is not as good as it could be well what we were talking about this weekend using service to enroll it's don't just do that in the coaching session have that be who you are with your prospect as well. So no difference between a client and a prospect. And, and if, I can, if I can have a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with a prospective client that's the same, identical, as I have with a client who's paid me a nice amount of money to work with me, um, then, then the likelihood that they'll become a client is greater. And, and that's not what people normally do. And we were pointing it out in a lot of different ways this weekend. People normally, because of their money fears, see a prospect as a kind of target. And uh, they dehumanize the process and dehumanize the other person. And don't allow for a heart-to-heart -heart connection because they're thinking, this person's using up my time and hasn't paid me yet. And I have to try to figure out a way to persuade them to pay me. And I'm scared about asking for money and my fee might be too high and they might take advantage of me and, you, and all of that stuff that would never occur with a client because they've already paid you. If, if I can drop that um, dehumanizing, warlike, psychologically violent approach that comes from trying to sell somebody else 
on the concept of coaching. If I can drop that and fall into who I am with a beloved client that I'm grateful for with, with any, anyone and everyone I speak to, including any member of my inner circle, any member of uh, any person my inner circle refers to me. If I can do that, then, then my experience and the experience of people I coach is that the practice is built faster and they are more prosperous and make clients, they get clients much faster when they do that. I, I love this whole topic and, and you're right, it's it's not something that we had in the title of the event but, but it was underpinning everything that we did over those two days which was absolutely service and I, I hope that we we model that for people because I know for me I, I kind of heard the word service and the word's just a word, it, it doesn't mean anything in and of itself but what I've experienced through through the work you do um, and and other people, both three principles coaches and, and non three principles coaches, is service has got almost like an unlimited depth to it. It's 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 kind of like how 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 deeply do I dare love the other person? And and that might sound a bit weird when we're talking about prosperity and growing a coaching practice, but for me that's where it comes in because love is the opposite of fear. And, and I was also fearful, if I do this, then they won't hire me because they've already got the answer. What if I if I send them something and, and then they don't hire me? And it was all keeping me small um, and, and fearful and insecure. And what I've seen from, from yourself and, and others like you is that really when we come from this true place of service, no, it's more fun. It's more fun growing a prosperous practice from a from a place of service as opposed to fear and insecurity. But it also just it really resonates with people. And the great thing is, no matter how much you and I say this, um, most coaches that I've experienced don't come from that place. So this is our you know our USP, our universal selling point. And I had someone reach out to me on Facebook saying, oh, everyone seems to be a coach nowadays. Um, and they were a 3P person. And they're like, well, if, if I were doing this again, um, you know, I'd want to have a USP. And for me, it was kind of missing the point that actually we're all individual coaches. We all coach in our own way. We've all got our own style. Um, and when we just come from this place of true service, that is a, that is a USP because there's only one of us there's there's only one one of us that does that and again no matter um who you are like even yourself people may look at you and think well you're really well known i think in truth you can easily walk through london without getting recognized you know it's not like you're 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 a, a, a film star I'm, and and people don't know who we are you know as coaches we can't work with a billion people you know, it, it just doesn't work that way. This profession doesn't work that way. And I find that we really do our most impactful work when we deeply serve a person in front of us. And, and that necessitates, you know, not doing a big global marketing launch of let me try and shift everyone. That's, in my opinion, I don't know what you feel, that's not what coaching is. And coaching is a really personal thing, person to person, heart to heart, um, and, and necessitates slowing down. And, and really deepening um, where we're coming from. I don't know if that if that makes sense. I, I agree with that. And one act of kindness uh, reverberates, has a chain reaction through the whole world. And if I'm just going to coach one person, but that person goes back to her family, and then that family goes out and those people go to school and they go into the workplace and, and the the reverberation effect of compassion and understanding of one human for another and freedom, the freedom that can come to someone who's being coached and can see life from a different vantage point than they've been seeing it, can, does go throughout the whole world. You don't have to be michael jackson or the dalai lama mm -hmm. to to have an impact on the entire world through this profession that's the beauty of the of the profession that's a, that's a really good point steve no i i, I like that 
Um, the the other thing that's connected to this was. I, I don't want people to, to look at you or me and think they need to grow their coaching practice like we've done it. Um, I really wanted to share this weekend some some kind of principles behind client creation, you know, the, the power of service, um, the power of connection, um, slowing down, you know, everything that we were, we were pointing to. But really there are, there were 24 people in the room and 24 different ways that coaching practices could grow um you know we really don't want to give or certainly i don't really want to give people a template of do this do this do this and and i know we, a few of the people in the room are clients of mine everyone's got their own their own different network they've got their own different experiences their own different background they've got their own style and in and in fact someone was telling me today that one thing they got from the event was was really do, all they need to do is be themselves and what they'd been doing had been trying to be someone else online and they thought they needed to do um, a certain, you know, had to be a certain way because they'd seen other people do that. And and I, I, we made the point at the weekend, but I also want to reiterate it, that that's certainly not what we're saying. And, you know, you, you can grow a coaching practice by having no website, no Facebook groups, no mailing lists, absolutely nothing, and just serve one person at a time. And if you love doing some of these things, you can really have a lot of impact in the world doing that. And I would really encourage people that came to just connect with what it is that they really love to do and what they like to do, and then use the principles that we've shared with them um, and and the idea of, of loving service and being heart-centered in whatever medium they want to then bring that into reality. Because, you know, we, I think you mentioned this over the two days, Steve, that in this profession, we don't have a boss telling us what to do, come in the morning, work on this. This is really down to us. And even if you have a coach and you're mentored, a coach and a mentor isn't there to babysit you and tell you how you should spend your day. And so I would just say, if you've got so many things that you could be doing, um, it's really, really helpful to start and, and concentrate on the things that you really enjoy doing. So, you know, I enjoy doing things like this and recording videos with you. I, I love it. It's it's fun. Um, I enjoy creating my, my interviews and doing things like that. So that's why I do them. But if but if I didn't enjoy them, I, I, I wouldn't do that. And there are other things that uh, I don't enjoy so much. I don't really enjoy sending out newsletters, for example. I know I could do it. I know people enjoy doing that. I may do them in the future, but but I really concentrate on on doing what what I really enjoy doing. And I I really encourage coaches that came along to, when they take things from this event, just just do the things that they really enjoy, um, and and bring more of that into the world. Yeah, I think that's such a good point, and because your joy, whatever it is, is it has a contagious nature to it and people feel that vibration and they know you're doing what you love that's why i hope you never do a newsletter because we we will when we receive it we will pick up on the vibe of it's something you felt obligated to write because you you found some coach who um convinced you that you could grow your network that way and but but when we're doing something that that we don't do with joy it, it communicates it's a joyless venture and it gets communicated or when we try to com do what someone else is doing because we think well i i thought that's what i was supposed to do and that's what i should do versus that little inner voice that prompts me to do it uh that's i want that's what i want to listen to so i don't have a boss but but there's wisdom in me that has a really still, silent voice that says, communicate with this person, reach out to that person, offer this person some of your time. Go back to that client and see, find out how that session went and if there's any more you can talk about. And that voice is uh, not the voice of some someone telling me what to do, but that's the voice of inspiration. And uh, the same is true, we covered this weekend the idea of professionalism and how how it would actually serve you and serve your client to have a very nice, dignified, simple, professional policy 
and you wrote the word policy up there. Just this is how it works. This is how this is how I coach. This is how I do things. This is how we're going to work together. And um, we'll be on time for our sessions. We will do this, and and you'll pay me this way. And that that professionalism serves a client, just as if you were a paramedic, washing your hands before doing something would serve the distressed person. You want to look for ways to serve. People get confused about professionalism, and they think, oh, if I'm trying to create an appearance of being more grown up than I really am. And, and they, 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 and I include myself because I did it for years. They, they personalize everything and make it be about my personal psychology and my, my own personal uh, paranoias and my own, the issues I think I have. And therefore, I rebel against things like professionalism and being on time, things we talked about. And it's a way of keeping it simple. Professionalism keeps things simple and with dignity. Even the, the Buddhist teachers who teach med meditation, there isn't a way you always have to sit in medita meditation with your legs a certain way and your hands this way. The primary idea is to sit with dignity, with a straight spine. So you're giving the giving the act some dignity, human dignity, and that that's powerful. That serves you to do that. It serves the meditation when you do that. And and we want to look for where service applies to the whole profession. My experience, last ten or fifteen years working with coaches and with myself is that these things we talked about, these ideas lead to a fast growing prosperous practice. And the things we also talked about, marketing, branding, um, all, all these um, shallower, more manipulative ideas don't lead to a prosperous coaching practice. In our experience, there might be an exception or two, but I still haven't seen a good one. Yeah, absolutely, and um, you know that that's a, that's a great reminder. And I, I I hadn't heard that about meditation in that example before, but no, that that's that's really struck a chord with me too about about dignity and professionalism. Um, and and I and I hope it's something that people and and take to heart and 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 they learn from. And um, I think like we demonstrated there were a lot of laugh there's a lot of laughter over the two days there was a lot of good humor this doesn't mean being humorless it doesn't mean um having a facade but yeah we can be professional um just in the way we show up and be very loving very compassionate completely um in service of the other person and seeing how it serves the other person um and and also have a lot of fun with it too um, you know, I, I love I love this profession. I love this industry. I love what I do for a living, and the professionalism adds to that. You know, and it and it kind of gives me a lot of a lot of pride in in what I do. Um, so yeah, so no, I, I I really I really like what you said there, Steve. Um, one of the other things that um, people have have asked me, um, there were a few people I think who were really introduced to the three principles. It wasn't a three principles um, event um, as such, but some people have started to ask and they really liked the inside out versus outside in diagram that I drew um, and wanted to really deepen their understanding of how they would use that with their clients. Um, so one of the things that I've uh, offered is for people to join my coaching group that I, that I run. Um, I think there are a few people have joined that already. I think a number of people were already in that group. But if you're listening to this and you aren't in the group and you haven't got the link or anything, then then do reach out. And one of the things that I've done in that group is at the top of the page, there's a pinned post which has got a whole host of further resources with people like yourself, Steve. Um, there's some live coaching that I've done in the past. And then other people like we've mentioned, Dick and Bettinger, Mark Howard, um, Jamie Smart, a, a lot of other people who who I've interviewed or done webinars with, which is which is about the three principles, but very much in the context of coaching, and how would we use this in a coaching practice? 
um, and, and I try and keep that fresh and, and interesting for people. Um, and, and I've got some very good feedback. So if people are looking to um, deepen their understanding of that piece, or even if you are a three principles coach and you, you really want to get more of an understanding around how to use this in a, in a coaching context, then that is, again, further resources that you know um, I, I'm very happy for people to dive into and, and get value from. Um, to to kind of deepen what may be you know maybe an interesting concept over the two days. Yes, and and it, I found it to be a very very good resource. I go there often, and uh, thank you for making that available. No, you um, and 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 thank you. For, you know, a number of the resources that are in that group have have come from yourself as well. So, um, you know, appreciate that. Um, is is there anything else, Steve, that you wanted to share that that you're reflecting on from from the couple of days? Um, I, I know Jacqueline and and I are going to be sharing some of the questions, um, so she just wants to change the format that that we've got them in so that they're more user friendly. So I haven't forgotten about that. So in case you haven't received them by the time you watch this recording, they are uh, on their way, and we haven't forgotten about it. Um, but but is there anything else, Steve, that you wanted to mention as a reflection from the weekend? No, I um, I just want to thank you. It was a great pleasure. You made me feel very welcome in London, and I enjoyed being there. Enjoyed working with you. I've done presentations with many people over the years, co-presenting, and um, it can be a challenge. With two people are working because everybody has a different rhythm and a different style and I really enjoyed working with you I learned a lot from the weekend um, just from listening to what you presented and the ways you answered questions so thanks for letting me be a part of it no I, I really appreciate it Steve and I'm, I'm so glad we were able to do this together and uh, like I said there was there was no one else that I would have rather have had in London to share uh, the stage with and, and share these themes with people um, I'm, I'm really proud of the work we've done I'm, I'm hope I hope and I, I've seen people are really happy with it um, and uh, you know thank you again for, for being part of it and I know you flew all the way over from the US for just a couple of days it's it's a big uh, trip and a big investment of your time um, and you know taking time away from the weekend um, so uh, so you know I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it I'm glad you came over um, we will be closing the uh, one of the final things I'll say is we will be closing the Facebook group like I said uh, we will be in a, in a few days so but we will carry on the conversation in my in my main coaching group uh, as I've mentioned so I do encourage people to join us there um, one question that I was asked actually from people about the chocolates uh, they are from a place called Paul A. Young um, and uh, they've got a few shops in Soho. Some people love them. Some people hated them. I, I, no, they I, didn't hate them. They didn't hate them. <laughs> they, they just didn't love them as much as you and I did. And as you know, I brought some home. You did. And I, I just, I told Kathy that it was five thousand dollars for a box. As Arthur, uh, I took him at his word, and uh, so uh, they didn't hate them. I don't think anyone hated the chocolates. Yeah, I think some people loved them and, and some people had a dysfunctional palate. I think that's the way we should put it. Some people just, uh, you know, and that's why we have all different kinds of people in the room and I love that. Yeah, and and Kathy did tell me that a few of the chocolates were missing by the time they arrived. Yeah, no that happened. I don't know how that happened. I think people in customs uh, got those. And so I'm going to have my attorney look into that. That, that must be it. That must be it. Okay. And on that note, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you for recording this. I hope people um, watch this and, and get some more value out of it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to kind of seeing what shows up for people and, and how they carry on uh, bringing this into their lives and coaching professions. Thank you. All right. Thank you.